Hey everybody, this is Jim with Dr. Jared here at Health Performance Center and we are continuing our discussions about the low back and you know doc we, we had a chance to talk a little bit about low back injuries and some of the reasons why and how they happen last week. Let's get into it a little bit more. What are some of the things that people need to really be aware of when dealing with walking on ice and shoveling and different things like that? Yeah, I mean some of that I'd love to be able to say hey this is what you got to do when you're doing that but like we, we've kind of talked about in previous um, uh, pieces, we just want to have things be subconscious to us so that we don't have to think about it. Regardless of what we run into, we're always prepared. And so by, by looking at that, we talked about all of the disc injuries, the facet injuries, compression, tension, sprain strains, all the things that can happen in the back. Well, you think, well, okay, I don't have that. How do I prevent it from happening? And really the buzzword or the key word is core stability. If you have core stability, your likelihood of, of developing any of these issues significantly reduces and vice versa. If you don't have that core stability, it's most likely just not a matter of, of if it's going to happen, it's when. So we do put question marks around there because there's a lot of things. If I bounce on a BOSU ball or you know sit on a, a ball instead of a chair, then I'm building core stability. Well, yes, maybe, but realistically, we want to have some things that guide us, that let us know for 100% certain that we are developing that core stability. And the first part is understanding what the heck the core is. Um, a lot of people will go into the gym and say, hey, I did a good core workout. I did a bunch of abs. Okay, that's great. You did one of the six parts of the core. Um, so you might have a really good front part of the house, but then when you actually walk in, it's just uh, broken down and everything's on fire. That's not that good. We want to have the whole kit and caboodle here. And we say that word house because it's really developed like a box. You know, and, and that's one thing too for, for novice and like a person like myself, I don't know a whole bunch about what's all involved with core. I mean, a lot of people hear core and it's like, oh, just the stomach. Yeah. There are so many different other elements and parts to core and core stability. Exactly. There are, um, but it's actually pretty simple once you understand what it is. Um, WebMD is kind of a nice thing. It gives people a lot of information, but unless you know what that information is and how to actually um, express it and use it, it's meaningless. It really confuses you. So you might say, ooh, this says it's core stability. You see it on an infomercial when realistically it's not doing anything of the sort. What we have to focus on are, are two uh, important things here. Um, the first is there's six parts of your core. It's a box, okay? And really what it does is it creates interabdominal pressure for your low back. It creates a nice solid platform for your upper thoracic uh, spine so that weights can be absorbed and produced and force can be produced through the shoulder, the proximal joint, and the hip, the proximal joint, for the work that we do. So there's a top and bottom. The top is the abdomen. And it's, or excuse me, the top is the diaphragm, it's used in breathing. The bottom is the pelvic floor, okay? It's something that a lot of people don't even know exists. Uh, what everybody knows about is the front, but there's also a back and all of this that works on with it, including glutes, uh, low back muscles, transverse abdominis, so many things around here. I'm using some big terms, but realistically, it's this big tube around here, as well as the top and the bottom. If we lose, if we don't have the sides, if we don't have the top, if we don't have the bottom, we lose the chance to create stability in our system or pressure to hold things together. So it's important if you don't know how to control this and create tension through each part, you're kind of missing the, the pieces of the puzzle and your exercise can actually lead to injury and that's a problem. The other thing is stability is always from core to extremity. So if you don't understand this and you can't express it, then you can't uh, have true stability because you won't be moving from core to extremity. You'll start to use rotator cuff to stabilize and then you'll wake up in the middle of the night with a sore shoulder. Why? Well, you've been using your movers to stabilize, and they, they're not designed to do that. Same with hip issues, low back issues. It's the same issue. An inability to stabilize here, so we steal from here, and the body doesn't like that over time. No doubt about it. And we're going to continue talking about this 
throughout the next couple months because core stability is going to be very big, especially with those low back injuries, but also the New Year's resolutions beginning with losing weight and different right. things like that. It's all going to come and roll together, and we're going to keep talking about this for a little while. Absolutely. Again, you know, I know we're drawing an end here, and we don't want to be too long, um, but we talk about that all the time. People wanting to do the right thing and actually doing theoretically what's right, but running into a huge roadblock in the fact that they run into injury before they get the results. We're going to make sure we understand these things and can uh, express them so the likelihood of an awesome outcome is actually achievable. Absolutely. Thanks, Dr. Jared, and we'll talk to everybody next week. See you.